Brent Dykes, thanks very much for being with us. Yeah, great, great to be here. Excellent. Um, so um, you're a data storytelling expert and you're writing a book which is coming out in the fall, is that right? Yeah, uh, October, November. It'll be called Effective Data Storytelling. Excellent. Um, data storytelling is, 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 I guess, quite a hot topic at the moment, a bit of a buzzword. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what's important about it? Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, sometimes data storytelling is confused with just data visualization, which is an aspect of data storytelling, but really it's much more than just data visualizations. And, and it's more about can we take the data that we have, combine it with visuals, but then also combine it with a narrative and maybe take some of the elements of, of, nata, uh, of narrative and combine it with how we share it in insight or, or how we share data. Excellent. Um, I was watching your presentation here at Rise just now, and um, it it really sort of it, it's it's about facts and emotion essentially. Can you can you explain um, how that works? And also, I was, I was particularly interested that there was one moment where you talked about the psychology of storytelling and how, in some ways, facts make our brain shut down, whereas the, the story um, opens our brain up. Yeah. So um, you know. One of the things I've I've always kind of thought, you know, as an analyst, former analyst, I would approach data, and if I had the facts and the figures, I had good logic, good reasoning, that that would influence the decision. But as I discovered in my career, that's not always the case, and that emotion actually plays a role. And the neuroscientists have actually gone in and done studies and found that that emotion plays a bigger role. And I shared the example of Antonio Damasio, uh, USC professor at, um, and how he worked with patients that had damage to their emotional centers and couldn't come to decisions quickly. Um, so the example that he shared was setting up a lunch appointment with these individuals and how a decision that you or I, I mean, we could probably say, well, what do you want to do for lunch? It would take a minute or two when we come to a decision. But these individuals, because they didn't have that emotional part to kind of guide their decision making, it, it took them 20, 30 minutes. Why? Because they were analytically going back and forth between the different options, comparing different aspects of the restaurants, and then finally coming to a conclusion. But so emotion, I've always kind of dismissed, maybe earlier in my career, I dismissed the power of emotion. But emotion is really, when, you, when we look at, um, if you're familiar with Daniel Kahneman um, in, in Think Fast and Slow, and he talks about system one and system two, a lot of the processing of new information goes through what is system one, which is our intuitive um, kind of um, autopilot, if you will. And so narration is, it, it, you know, it, it speaks to that part of the brain very well. And obviously we have the other part of the brain, which is system two, where we, you know, it's our analytic, analytical processing uh, part of our brain, but that system two relies a lot on system one to kind of make judgments and kind of know when to step in. So if, with the storytelling, you know, narrative is a big part of how that system one works. You know, I shared the example in the presentation of the six word stories and show and the reason why I shared that. And, and so I don't know if your viewers of your podcast here are familiar with this, but there's this concept of six word stories. Yeah, the, I mean, it, uh, what it made me think of was the opening line of Macbeth, where yeah. so much is explained in so few words. Right. And so what happens is the brain is actually adding. So, uh, so your uh, viewers know what an uh, example of that would be. Um, uh, the example is, you know, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. Okay, well, those are six words. And we start to interpret, oh, you know, what's, what is that? We turn that into a story. But it, it's really those words aren't a story. It's the brain making sense of that, adding meaning, adding the, the details that, that, we, that we associate with with what that would mean as a story. And so it's, it's interesting, you know, and one of the quotes I shared was, you know, the, the brain, I think it was Jonathan Haid, um, a psychologist, said that, you know, our brains aren't really uh, logic processors, they're more story processors. And I think that's really critical as we look at the data, you know, we have all this treasure trove of data and insights. And if we think about it, like, how can we facilitate it um, so that people can can process the information more easily if we can put it into something that the brain is conducive to 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 understanding information and that's the narrative that's the data so the more we can combine those two i think that's that's where we're going to see our insights really resonate with audiences in ways that that we typically wouldn't see so that's a great great point um final question just uh, about your book 
So you talked about the narrative arc. I wonder if you'd share with us what the uh, the hook of the book is and what the aha moment is. Yeah. So uh, interesting with the book, what I tried to do. I, so I once I went to a presentation, somebody was I'm, I'm very interested in data storytelling. And this one particular vendor had a, a webinar on data storytelling. So I was like, oh, great. I, I'd love to see that. Um, so I went and uh, went to their presentation and they didn't mention any stories at all. I think that's kind of, um, that's not. Uh, that's a very ad tech approach to take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what I did in, in throughout my book, I, I share a lot of stories. Every chapter in my book opens with a story. And so about sharing data and um, storytelling. So I think that's one key thing. Um, in terms of the, 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 the hook for my book, I mean, I, I think really what I'm focused on is driving change. Because I think, I believe that insights, if we can position them the right way, you know, we can make, through data storytelling, we can make them persuasive and memorable. And the key thing, you know, we have all this vast treasure trove of data. Excellent. Um, well, Brent Dykes, thanks very much. I think um, uh, data storytelling has a long way to run. We're probably just in the beginning of this, uh, this particular sort of cycle. Um, so uh, thanks very much for being with us. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, Simon. And uh, yeah, love talking about data storytelling. And thanks, everyone, for watching.